My name is Cynthia Davidson, and I'm the co-curator of the exhibition, The Architectural Imagination. The Architectural Imagination is something that Monica Ponce de Leon and I conceived together in 2014 to present as a proposal to the Department of State for an exhibition at the Venice International Architecture Biennale. We didn't want them to be fantastical ideas. We didn't want sci-fi, Blade Runner kinds of ideas. We didn't want Disney Cinderella castles. We wanted to ground it in reality. And Detroit was a very interesting reality to us for two reasons. One, it is a city with a history of invention and imagination. At the same time, Detroit has been losing population, losing jobs, losing buildings, housing a lot of empty land, and it seemed a, a great fit to try to put the sort of optimism that architecture represents to Monica and me in a city that was really struggling, especially during bankruptcy proceedings, to turn the image of the city around. When we met with our advisory board to talk about sites in Detroit that would benefit from close study by new, new minds, new architectural thinkers and makers, that would benefit how Detroit is thinking about itself, uh, what sites should those be? So we tried to focus on smaller sites, all of which are still quite large, urbanistically speaking that are sites that are a little bit under pressure, and sites where something is probably going to happen, and doing extra study on them hopefully would put ideas on the table for considering other sites. It's not easy being a critic because you have to be careful not to become an activist. If you're going to be a critic and offer up new questions, offer up perhaps new ways of looking at something. There's always a lot of discussion about what is the fiction of architecture because you could argue that every new project starts a new story and starts a new history. So what is the narrative here? Uh, I mean, if you were to take Let's just take the post office site because we're sitting in the corner of that gallery right now. If someone were to say, I really love this idea of planting forests and doing timber construction in Detroit, that will completely change the narrative of Corktown. It will, will be like a, a right hand turn in the history of that place. What happens in cities shifts all the time, just like what happens in buildings shifts all the time. The city itself also shifts all the time for economic and political reasons. So the narrative of Corktown would change, meaning the story of its history would change. And it would change how people think about living there would change how people think about Detroit, a city with a history of toxic pollutants through the automobile industry before anybody really realized the damage those industries were doing to the environment. I mean, this is really a kind of reclamation project in, in many ways. Um, a project like that, if it were done at the scale they proposed, could even change the narrative beyond, way beyond Detroit. It could change the narrative in other post-industrial cities or, or the narrative in the whole United States. Response to space, and that's what architects do, they make space. Response to space is subjective. It depends on life experience. When architects shape space, I think people have the expectation of right angle corners, four walls, adequate light, protection from rain, the solid roof, I and mean, they have certain expectations. 
but for me personally, what I'm interested in is what happens to, to people's responses to space when architects push that to challenge how you occupy that space, how you think about the city, how you think about ownership of property, how you think about public space, how you think about private space. And as we as people have changed psychologically and how we adapt to our landscapes and our buildings, then buildings also can change. In trying to make these empty spaces more inviting, it is a way to sort of ameliorate a condition that looks rather bleak in some areas of the city and makes it more, the city seem, I think, probably more vibrant, more positive, and if that attracts population or helps people who already live here to say, you know, I feel better about my neighborhood, I'm going to stay here now, then that's all good. And that's where design really enters into how you think about the city.